when we supply to the filled winding and the armature winding both this winding starts producing a magnetic field and because of this interaction of these two magnetic field the armature of DC motor starts rotating yes using on screen animation we are going to learn how DC motor works so without wasting time let's quickly jump to the video DC motor is used to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. From small rating motors in various home applications and toys to large rating motors in locomotives and industries, DC motors are used everywhere. Basically, these DC motors are used in various applications in different size. There are different types of DC motors and if you want to learn that thing, then you must check out my this video. There I am discussing classification of DC motor and generator with the differences in the construction. But ultimately all of this motor works the same. And now we are going to explore how this DC motor works. When we give supply to the filled winding and the armature winding, current starts flowing through both the windings. Because of that current, a magnetic field is produced and because of the interaction of two magnetic fields, rotor starts rotating. But at initial level, it is difficult to understand. So we'll build up with simple example and then gradually understand the full working of DC motor. So let's have a simple example. Let's suppose we have a magnet. And if we bring another magnet closer to this, what will happen? In this case, both of these magnets are facing the same polarity. So it will try to repel each other and the another magnet will go away. Remember this thing because this logic we are going to use to understand the operation. As the same polarity of permanent magnet repel each other, the same thing going to happen in DC motor. But the only difference is DC motor do not have permanent magnet. It has electromagnet. So let's understand how does it creates electromagnet. When we take a normal metal piece, all the electron dipoles in that metal piece are randomly arranged. And in order to make all these dipoles in one direction, we need to connect it with a coil and flow a current through that coil. When the current flows, all the dipole will be arranged in same direction. How this is happening? If you know, then write that thing in comments below. And if you want to know, then write that thing in comments below and I'll make a separate animated video on that logic. Now we come to know that how this electromagnet has been created. So we'll take a simple model of DC motor and understand how does it works. We have a two metal piece. We are going to use this DC source to make this two metal piece a two electromagnets. When we start flowing current through these electromagnets, these two simple metal pieces will convert into electromagnet. One metal piece becomes N pole and the another becomes S pole. And there will be a magnetic field between N to S. Now let's place a copper loop in this magnetic field. The end of this copper loop will be connected to a commutator and the commutator assembly is connected to the brush. And then finally, the brush is connected to the DC supply. And here we have another angled view of the simple arrangement. Now we know that when we place a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, then that current carrying conductor tries to move. It will experience a force. But right now, there is no current flowing through this coil. And that is why we are not getting any mechanical movement in this coil. Now we'll see when we place a copper conductor in a magnetic field, it will experience a force. But what will be the direction of force? The direction can be identified through Fleming's left hand rule. This is the right hand, this is the left hand and this is the Fleming's left hand rule. The first finger shows the direction of magnetic field. Let's place it in the direction of magnetic field. Our magnetic field is in this direction. So it is in the direction of magnetic field. The second finger will be in the direction of current. Current is flowing in this direction. So it is pointing towards it. 
and this third one will represent the direction of force experienced. So the force will be in upward direction. In other words, you can understand it like this. When the current flowing through this section of the coil in upward direction, then this will become S pole and the current is flowing in downward direction, then this will become N pole. So we have seen previously the same polarity will repel each other. So the same thing happened over here. Here we have S pole facing S pole, N pole facing N pole. So here we will have a magnetic push and because of this magnetic push, the rotor will shift. But when the coil is in this position, because of this arrangement of commutator segment, there will not be any current flowing through this coil. But still this coil moves further because of its inertia. When this coil reaches under the end pole section, what will happen to this coil? Let's understand at this side. Initially, this side was on left hand side of the coil and this side was on the right hand side of the coil. But when this side was on left hand side, the current was flowing in upward direction and when this side was on right hand side, the current was flowing in downward direction. But here the direction of current has changed and because of this changed direction of the current, magnetic polarity will also reverse and this side become again N pole and this side will become again S pole. And when this is the case, again the same thing will happen. This S pole facing S and this N pole facing N and because of this, this will experience a magnetic force. That force is known as the torque and because of that torque, this rotor will start rotating. At this point, the torque will be almost zero but because of its inertia, it will keep on rotating. Hey, stop a moment. I would like to ask for a favor. If you are enjoying this video, then do not forget to hit the like button and press the subscribe button because your one like and subscription motivates me a lot and that motivation keeps me working on creating this type of animated videos. So if you want more animated videos, hit the like button, write in comment section and press the subscription button. If you want to ask any of your doubt, you can write in comment section below or you can directly ask me on my telegram page. The link is given in description box below. And now let's get back to the topic. And when we keep this supply on, this rotor will keep on rotating. But one thing you should understand that with only one turn and one loop, this motor will not have a smooth rotation and a high amount of torque. So to get smooth rotation and good amount of torque, it should have multiple turns and multiple loops. So now we are going to jump towards the real DC motors animation and we'll understand that thing. This is our DC motor. These are the pole of DC motor. This center portion is the armature. Here you can see there are multiple loops we have arranged in this armature. So these are the loops that we have seen previously. Now we are providing winding on the field poles and together this will become a field winding. Now we are going to mount a commutator assembly which is connected with the brush assembly and then finally we are providing the connections to the terminal box. Now we will provide a supply to the field winding and when the current starts flowing through the field winding it produces a constant magnetic field. The same way to this field winding, we will provide supply to the armature winding. And when the current flows through this armature winding, this winding also produces another magnetic field. When these two magnetic fields interact with each other, it will create some magnetic pull. And because of this magnetic pull, the rotor will start rotating. So finally, I am going to tell you the full sequence of how this DC motor works. First, we will supply to field winding as well as to armature winding. Because of this supply, current starts flowing to both this winding. When current starts flowing in both this winding, both the winding creates a magnetic field. 
when both the winding creates magnetic field the field poles and armature will behave as a magnet when there are two magnets same polarity will repel each other and because of this repulsion force rotor will starts rotating and this is how the dc motor works there are more similar interesting animated videos on my channel you can visit my channel's page and learn so many things on electrical field so until we meet again in our next video till the time bye bye